بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Now the next thing we'll try to understand about the cap web tunnels now cap web stands for control and provisioning wireless access points and the previous section we have discussed the authentication the, the basically how the access point is going to bind with the wlc with the discovery process where every access point is going to discover and establish a connection with an access point so again it is going to build a tunnel and we call this as cap web tunnels now this cap web tunnels are responsible for encapsulating your the user traffic i'll talk about that similar way every access point is going to build a cap web tunnel where the actual uh, traffic is encapsulated as it moves through the network now once the client the access point is going to discover with the wlc and once it finishes the authentication process it's going to build the cap web tunnel so this is your cap web tunnel and likewise when you have multiple access points so all the access points are going to build the same thing so they are going to build something called cap web tunnels now this wlc is going to become the central hub that is going to support multiple access points which are scattered in your network so maybe you have hundreds of access points or thousands of access points so every access point has to build a cap web tunnel that's that something uh, established the cap web tunnel is established after they both uh, discover and join with each other now what exactly this cap web tunnels will do again the two devices now two devices means here the access point and the wlc now these two devices they build the cap web tunnels that is your tunneling protocol cap web is a tunneling protocol which is going to uh, carry the 802.11 related messages and the client data so as i said it is going to encapsulate the data between the access point and the wlc within the ip packets now how exactly it is going to be like let's say this is a wireless client now this wireless client is going to connect to the access point and now this access point already established a cap web tunnel so there is a cap web tunnel which is being established once they discover and join with each other and now this wlc is going to receive the information so now what happens is this access point is going to encapsulate the all the data whatever the user traffic we can say so this is going to be encapsulated inside this cap web tunnel and it is being sent to the wlc now once it reaches the wlc now the wlc is uh going to de- uh, unencapsulate or remove the encapsulation whatever the cap web encapsulation is going to remove it and then depending upon it is going to examine the particular frame identify the device based on the mac address the same like normal uh switching and it's going to identify the vlan and then forward over the trunk link to the respective vlan it is supposed to reach and based on that it will reach a specific destination let's say this is my destination now again the same thing happens when the packet is returning back so it will go again the same way and there will be a cap web tunnel established here between them the same thing reaches to the wlc so when it is returning it is like kind of reverse so again the wlc is going to uh, tunnel or encapsulate back to the access point and then it reaches back to the end client again so that's that's what happens so basically this is a back end process where it is going to use something called cap web tunnel and uh, inside this tunnel all the user traffic is encapsulated uh, encapsulated between this so it it includes all 802.11 related messages and the client data now again as the network grows like i said as the more access points you have so let's say these are all my access points so every access point is going to build a centralized uh, cap web tunnels like every access point have a separate a tunnel is being established between the access points and the wlc so again wlc is like a central hub act as a central hub connecting to all the access points now again one more thing like ssids can uh, exist on each and every access point which means let's say you may have a vlan 100 user 
is configured with a society, uh, let's say 100, and you want the users of this SSID 100 to talk to the SSID 100 on the different access point. Now, how it works, again, the same thing. It's the access point is going to encapsulate inside the tunnel. And then the WLC is going to de-encapsulate or remove the encapsulation and then check the VLAN ID and then send it back to the switch and from there to the switch and then reaches to the nearest access point and then back to the end, end device. So this is uh, the same typical process what I discussed. And one more thing we need to uh, remember, whatever the access point you're using, let's say this access point and the WLC uh, need not to be directly connected, means the access point and WLC may be in different, uh, far from each other, no direct connection. Because if you see the topology, I do have multiple switches connected here. And Technically, these two can be on the same net, same subnet, like this can be on 10.1.1.1 and this can be on 10.1.1.2, or it can be on different subnet, like maybe this is 192.168.1.1, .1, present on a different VLAN, different network, so that's, that doesn't matter. So as long as you have reachability between the access point and the, and the WLC, we can still establish the cap reference. So that's what the AP and the WLC need not to be on the same subnet. So they can be on the same subnet or they can be still on different subnets. So it's like not compulsory to be on the same subnets. 